Indonesia is gripped with election fever. Tomorrow, well over 100 million people will cast their vote for only the fourth time since the overthrow of the dictator Suharto. Oh, this is uh, maybe the most interesting Indonesian election ever because there's a real choice here. The front runner is unlike any politician before him in Indonesia. The man on stage is Joko Widodo. Everyone here knows him as Joko Wi. He's the governor of Jakarta, but if the polls are correct, he could soon be president of this vast and often chaotic country. It's been a meteoric political rise from businessman to mayor of a provincial city to governor of Jakarta. And now he's vying for the top job in the land. <laughs> He's seen as a clean skin in a sea of corruption, with a no-nonsense, lead-by-example style. But the other candidate has been catching up fast. If Jokowi represents a new direction, this man is a potent symbol of the old. Prabowo Subianto is a controversial figure, a former general and commander of Suharto's notorious special forces. He's linked to murder, torture and kidnap. And he's making some bold promises. The editor-in-chief of the English-language Jakarta Post says any corruption busting is highly unlikely. When you have a coalition who were the chairmen of most of the parties there, almost the majority of the parties there or senior members of the party there have been indicted for corrupt activities, then that's a good question. How are you going to do that? Jokowi comes from very humble beginnings in the city of Surakarta, otherwise known as Solo. He grew up on this riverbank in a long gone house where this building now stands. In 1977, the family home was torn down and they were evicted. The experience apparently hit young Jokowi hard. He studied forestry at university and went into furniture making. It's still a thriving export business. He was elected mayor of Solo in 2005 and became hugely popular by cleaning up the city, improving services and stamping out corruption. The way Jokowi dealt with the families who built illegal shacks on this land showcases his style. After months of consultation, he converted the riverbank into a park and gave the squatters new homes. Di sana itu belum punya sertifikat. Sekarang sudah punya sertifikat dikarenakan uh, diusahakan oleh Pak Wali Kota Pak Jokowi dulu. And the free healthcare program he introduced is wildly popular. Kebijakan itu sudah merasakan sini kan dioperasi nggak bayar. Gimana? Kebijakan Pak Jokowi itu ini dulu sakit itu dioperasi kan nggak bayar sama Pak Jokowi. Gratis. Itu bukan ini kok ya semua. Locals believe he can do the same nationally. Ya nanti tetap pasti berubah. Saya saya yakin tuh ada perubahan yang pesat sekali. Tidak ya. Saya yakin itu. Jokowi is a breath of fresh air. 
I think the main thing that he does offer is hope for clean and better go governance and a governance that actually execute what it says. Back in Jakarta, it's debate night. Jokowi supporters outside the venue are drowned out by the Prabowo fans. <laughs> Prabowo's aides and supporters are a who's who of the old Suharto regime. Yunus Yosfia, the soldier in charge that day in 1975 in Balibo, East Timor, when the Australian journalists were killed. And Prabowo's ex-wife, Titik, whose dictator father, Suharto, stole tens of billions of dollars over his 32-year rule. Merakyat, sederhana, tidak arogan, gak, gak neko-neko, tampangnya itu tulus. Ketika Jokowi diangkat menjadi gubernur DKI Jakarta, beliau kan juga sudah berjanji dan bersumpah untuk mengakhiri masa jabatannya di Jakarta sampai selesai. Gitu. Melanggar janjinya sendiri itu sebenarnya bukan uh, sebuah pemimpin yang seorang pemimpin yang benar sih gitu sih jadi kita secara keseluruhan sih saya mendukung Prabowo Indonesia bangkit. Prabowo supporters nationalistic ads with their military overtones have raised alarm bells for many viewers Siapa lagi kau bukan kita? Mugianto is one of them he was one of 23 anti-Suharto activists kidnapped by Prabowo's men in 1998. I was so, at that time, so afraid, so powerless that, oh my God, I got caught. After two days of interrogation and torture, he was released with eight others. One was later found shot dead, and the other 13 have never been seen again. Prabowo admits kidnapping the survivors but not the others. Mugianto believes he's lying. The kidnappings, so personal for Mugianto, have become an election issue. Mugianto also confirmed that Prabowo is proven to be involved in the activist of 1998. So I believe that this is done by the initiative. It's difficult for me to imagine that he will be the president. You know, it's difficult, and 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 that is the reason why I work very hard for the last, you know, for the last 16 years basically, for justice, for this person to be, for this person to be held accountable, and very intensively currently, uh, for this person not to be elected. Another survivor has taken a very different approach to his kidnapper. It's hard to believe, but Pius Lustrilanang is now a member of parliament in Prabowo's party. He's sick of being asked about it. So, kenapa gabung dengan dengan penjahat? Ya? Apakah itu soal uang? Apakah ini Stockholm syndrome? Ya begitu kan? Dan itu terjadi terus. Ya, sudah, nggak ada masalah. Sejak awal saya percaya bahwa penculikan itu diperintahkan oleh Soeharto. Ya, kenapa? Karena tidak mungkin Prabowo melaksanakan operasi intelijen itu tanpa perintah, ya. Bahwa Prabowo terlibat di dalamnya, iya. Bahwa dia mengendalikan operasi yang yang berada di bawah kendali dia, iya. Tapi dia bukan satu-satunya yang bersalah. Prabowo bukan orang sempurna. Dia orang manusia biasa. Dia orang keras, tapi dia orang jujur. One of Prabowo's closest confidants is his billionaire brother, Hashim Joko Hadikusumo, who's bankrolling his campaign. Sesungguhnya kakak saya ada seorang yang sangat-sangat hargai agama-agama lain. He's addressing the Chinese and Christian communities and asking them to vote for his brother. 
But many here would remember the violence of 1998, including the systematic rape of hundreds of Chinese Indonesian women, a horror which some believe Prabowo was behind. Umat Buddha, umat Hindu, umat Kongfutsu, semua umat bisa tenang. Tenang ketika kakak saya terpilih jadi presiden Indonesia. It may help his sales pitch that he's a born-again Christian, but the audience also knows that Prabowo has been aligning himself with hardline Muslim groups. Belakangan saya lihat seperti tadi Bapak Simbu, Pak Prabowo mulai dikelilingi oleh ekstrem-ekstrem. Prabowo's brother plays down the deal they've made with the Violent Islamic Defenders Front, or FPI. Dan saya kira saya sedih, sedih sekali kan selihat ada orang yang percaya bahwa Prabowo itu radikal. Bukan Prabowo yang minta dukungan dari FPI, saudara-saudara. Bukan. Tapi kalau orang mendukung kita, masa kita menolak? Every week, these activists come to the presidential palace demanding justice for the many victims of the Sahato regime. But they're not only concerned about Prabowo. Jokowi's team has its image problems too. Other retired generals with very dubious human rights records have thrown their weight behind him. And activists like Suciwati are torn. Bahwa ketika kita bilang tidak pada Prabowo, bukan berarti saya iya pada Jokowi. Karena di sekeliling Jokowi juga banyak pelaku pelanggar HAM. Dan tentunya kita uh, konsisten bahwa semua pelaku pelanggar HAM harus ditolak. Menikmati kejahatan dan menikmati hasil korupsi. Suciwati blames former generals in Jokowi's camp for the assassination 10 years ago of her human rights lawyer husband, Munir. Then there's General Wiranto. Under his watch as armed forces chief in the late 90s, students were shot and East Timor was razed. Terus seketika hari ini ada capres hanya dua, satunya pelaku pelanggar HAM, satunya lagi uh, orang yang mungkin rekam rekam jejaknya bagus, tapi orang-orang yang di di sekitarnya tuh bermasalah. Back on the hustings, Prabowo's well-organized and well-funded campaign has the Jokowi camp rattled. Saya harus menyampaikan apa adanya. Jadi hasil survei kita, hasil survei untuk Jakarta, kita pada hari terakhir ini memang kalah. It's not what the faithful want to hear. Saya sendiri juga kaget, ada isu apa saya nggak tahu di bawah, mungkin Bapak Ibu yang tahu. Uh, mohon maaf untuk pers, saya mau ini rapat tertutup, mohon agar tidak berada di ruangan ini dulu. After the meeting, I ask him about the polls. I heard you say that you're uh, losing, yeah, in, in the no, polls. No, 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 not not losing, no, no. no. So, so you're, st you're still <laughs> not losing. No, the, the gap is closing, is it? No, not 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 uh, the gap not closing because we we have uh, the range around ten and twelve percent. Okay, so you're still still confident that you can. Uh... Very confident. Dan calon presiden. Whoever wins will have a lot on their plate, including repairing strained relations with Australia. In another debate, Jokowi asks Prabowo a direct question about that relationship. Apa yang salah dalam hubungan Indonesia dan Australia? Sehingga sering kali naik dan turun. Sering sekali panas dan dingin. Terima kasih. Mungkin Australia uh... Ada semacam kecurigaan atau fobia terhadap kita. Ya. Kita pernah beberapa kali lakukan tindakan-tindakan militer. Uh, jadi mungkin itu bagi mereka, uh, mereka menganggap kita sebagai sebagai ancaman. Mungkin. Ya. Jadi kalau menurut saya uh, nanti kewajiban kita untuk yakinkan kawan-kawan kita di Australia bahwa we want to be good neighbors. 
Tonight, the latest polls suggest the Jokowi vote is strengthening. The official count won't be announced until July 20th.